not a synthesizer, but a really great and useful device from Behringer of all people. Coming up next. All right, I don't own much Behringer gear. I have actually two devices. This is one, a cable tester, and I have a headphone amp that both have worked fairly well. This is battery powered. You can hook it on your belt. And this is actually really, really useful. I do believe in true Behringer style that this is a clone of another unit, but it works really well. It's inexpensive. And it's really useful for finding problems in cables, including intermittent problems, which typically are really hard to find in cables. It will allow you to send signals. It has a tone generator. You can actually send a, a 1 kilohertz or 440 kilohertz tone. tone. Uh, all you got to do is plug it into any of the outputs, the audio outputs, um, and it will generate that tone so you can test it on an input. I can show that right here. It works with all kinds of different cables. You got XLR, you got quarter inch, TS, TRS. You got a uh, three and a half millimeter or one eighth inch T TS and TRS. Uh, we got MIDI cables, we got RCA, and we got the TT patch cables. I'm going to show you all of those today except for the TT because I don't have a modular system and I don't have anything that uses TT cables, but I'm going to assume that it works just fine. So to use this, all you got to do is take the cable and you plug it in, one into the in and one to the out like that and you turn it on cable tester and you hit reset and it shows that on this one it has the sleeve which is the uh, the ground and the tip so pin one is connected to pin one pin two is connected to pin two so all is right with the world this cable is good next let's check a MIDI cable. So we'll plug in a MIDI cable onto the side there. Now MIDI cable has five connectors in it, but actually only three are used. There's send, receive, and, and a ground. It's a, it's a current loop. So we'll plug those in. We'll hit reset. And as we can see, pin one is connected to pin one, pin two, pin two, pin three, pin three. So not only does it tell you if the thing is not working correctly, but if it's wired incorrectly, it will also show up here because it'll say, hey, pin one is connected to pin three or, or what have you. Um, and it does show intermittent faults. That's why if you notice when I unplug it, these lights here that show an intermittent fault light up and they are latching. So you plug it in and you hit reset to reset that latch and now it shows correct. Uh, it does also show you phantom power if you have phantom power on the XLR cable that you're plugging into. So that's our uh, MIDI cable. Next, let's try a TRS 1 8 inch phono plug. So we'll plug one to the in, one in, one out, and again, yep, looks good. Okay, so that's the TRS, because the TRS obviously has three conductors, and if we look at a TS, which only has two conductors, obviously we should only see two of those lights light up. And what are we seeing here? Pin 1 is connected to pin 1, pin 2 is connected to pin 2, pin 3 is connected to pin 3, and pin 3 is connected to pin 1. And the reason for that is we have tip, ring, and sleeve. So normally the, the tip is connected to the tip, which is 2, the ring is connected to the ring, which is three, and the sleeve is connected to the sleeve, which is one. However, there is no ring on this one. The ring is actually connected to the sleeve, because you can see it's all one conductor. So when we plug it in, that's exactly what it shows. The ring is connected to the sleeve. So when we have a TS cable, this is actually correct. That's how it should show up. And last, the reason I'm actually making this video is because I have a problem with an XLR cable that has an intermittent fault, so I would like to find out what that fault is. So I'm going to plug it in here, and plug it in here, and we will reset it. And right away we can see that pin 2 is not connected. Let's just wiggle this around to see if we have a problem. Ah, oh, ha ha! Now when I wiggled this cable, all of a sudden we saw an intermittent fault on this one. 
And if I wiggle it, you can see pin two actually just flickered there for a second as well. So even though it may flicker just for an instant, because this is latching, it shows you, hey, you got a problem. So if you look again, I'll wiggle this, this connector here and all is good. But when I start wiggling this connector here, there's our fault. So that is the male, or rather the female. So let's take that apart and have a look at it. So we'll just unscrew the this cable strain relief. And then we'll unscrew the connector itself. And then we'll just pull that connector out of there. Feed the cable through. And pull that out, and right away there's our problem. We got a wire that's come off, that's broken off that connector there. That white wire there has come away from this connector. So that's an easy fix. So this should be a relatively simple fix. We'll just tin this wire here. And maybe this connector here. With some fresh solder on there. Good and hot. Good as new. So now we'll just put this back together. Put the screw back in there. We attach our cable strain relief clamp. And let's give it another test. Reset, and pin two is still bad. All right, so let's have a look at the male side of things then. All right, well, this video totally did not go the way I expected it to. I thought I would just solder that thing back on there and the thing would work great. But no, what happened was it was still showing bad. So what I did is I actually cut several inches back of cable and re-soldered both ends. Because a lot of the time, the cable breaks right near this strain relief and uh, it's internal to the cable. So if you cut that away and then solder the, a new end, further back on the cable it fixes it so then I did that on both ends so it should be good and I plug it in and what do we see same exact thing no pin 2 however if I start wiggling the cable around farther down I noticed that as I wiggled the ca the cable you can see I'm getting shorts and I'm getting uh, I did see pin 2 actually shorted to pin 1 at one point you can see I've got intermittent on all of them so that tells me that somewhere inside of this jumble of cable is a short. So this cable is scrap because once you, I mean, if you forget a cable that's short, oh, son of a bitch. 12 seconds later. Yeah, that was the, uh, that was the sound of my soldering iron falling and landing on my finger and burning right there. Sorry about that. 800 degree soldering iron. That was uh, 840 degrees on my hand there. It didn't feel so good. Okay, so basically there's a, at least one break in this cable somewhere in this mess of cable, so this thing is scrap. But it's not totally useless because I will cut these ends off because I can use these connectors again on a different cable. So I'll just cut them off, put the strain leaves back on, we'll toss this cable in the garbage, and these will be used another day for a different cable. All right, that's my quick and dirty video on the Behringer CT100 cable tester. Very useful thing. You can see I used it to help diagnose that there was a problem with the cable when I tried to fix the cable, then told me, hey, still you still got a problem with this cable, which then 
helped me identify that the problem in the cable was actually halfway through the cable, so I knew the cable was garbage and now it's in the trash. So, helpful little device, saved me a bunch of time right now, it saves me a lot of time all the time, and I'm now going to go put some ice on my finger here because I feel like this has turned into an Electro Boom video. If you like what you saw here, please click like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time we post new videos, which I know you're going to want to see. Thanks for watching.